With over $4 trillion poured into AI, according to this Reuters article, it's clear that we're on the brink of a new revolution, one that's arguably as important as the development of the personal computer itself. Yet, I know I'm not alone when I say that I'm not entirely sure how AI will become ingrained into my daily life. It feels like a buzzword, a term tech bros who understand things like neural networks and machine learning use to excite venture capitalists. But for the average guy like myself who's not in tech, there's this confusion that I have when I try to think of its use cases. As someone in my mid-30s, I don't find myself writing reports or articles frequently as a student might, nor am I a graphic designer whose bread and butter depends on editing photos all day. It's even harder for me to relate when the examples that ChatGPT 4.0 gives feels a little bit out of touch with reality. Can you give me feedback on my breaths? Okay, here I go. <laughs> Now, I don't mean to undermine how powerful AI is and its ability to take input and perceive with human-like intuition and respond accordingly. And it's really awesome to think about how AI essentially will give everyone with the access to powerful, dedicated AI chips or neural processing units, NPU for short, to basically have a personal assistant. But there's no denying that there will be a learning curve for most folks who didn't grow up with AI, like myself. Now, Without a doubt, there are what I perceive four groups of people who will jump on this bandwagon faster than the average person. First, there are children with infinite number of questions that AI will be able to answer, which opens up a can of worms that I'll avoid for now. Second, the entire education field. Not only does AI benefit current students in both the social sciences and STEM fields, but also teachers and educators across all age and topics. Thirdly, those who are currently entering or are in their first few years in their career in programming or graphic design. And lastly, the academic, both professionally and leisurely, who often read a lot of articles or research extensively particular topics. There are definitely a few other groups I'm missing, but to be honest, I don't fall squarely in any of these groups. And I have a strong feeling that there are a lot of us who currently don't see the need to switch from a Google search to Gemini, or are flocking to ChatGPT 4.0 to improve their workflow or life tasks. However, I think there is a paradigm shift that we have to take, and that's how emerging technology always stems from two sources. First, which is war, and second, business, or in other words, competition. Now, I know this sounds cynical, but if you really think about it, the mother of invention really comes down to developing technology that helps countries gain an advantage over other countries or helps businesses gain advantage over other businesses. Now, this can be seen with the development of the computer, which was really jump-started in World War II to help decipher secret codes, or the development of the nuclear bomb to establish dominance in war or even when considering the race to space to show technological superiority. Each of these instances showcase when colossal advancements of technology were driven by yes, ingenuity, but more importantly, a race for superiority. I'm getting ahead of myself here. What's actually really helped me get a glimpse of how the leaders in the industry are considering the use case for the most powerful technology in the world today is in a recent YouTube interview I just saw with Google's CEO and YouTuber Hale's World, or Haley's World, I'm sorry, which you should definitely watch as soon as this video is over. So back to the paradigm shift. There are undoubtedly implementations of AI that will serve to assist the military in ways we cannot and probably don't want to understand. And secondly, for businesses as mentioned here. The fact we are using the same AI to make your car self-driving in a same way, right? Or using AI to better discover drugs that can target difficult diseases. Mm. So you should view it, you know, I've compared it in the past to electricity or fire, you know. So I've called it more profound than that. And with that said, AI will first and foremostly be implemented by businesses with the means to leverage AI in ways that will have rippling effects across their respective industry. And secondly, in ways that we just can't foresee right now. I think this is the key factor we have to grasp. The average person like myself won't truly benefit from AI until we see a mass of businesses adopting it first to have a competitive edge in their field. As Sundar mentioned, imagine the drug companies adopting AI to develop the cures for cancer or for self-driving for the masses to finally become a reality. 
These advancements in business will be the first real tangible fruits of this emerging technology the average person like myself will be able to experience. Okay, so what about today? It's fun to think about how AI can be applicable for you and I today. I think it would be even more exciting to see in comments if you are in a profession like medicine, teaching, or software development to see how AI has amplified, expanded, and assisted in your daily activities. But for someone like myself, I feel like AI can quickly become that really smart and non-pretentious friend that just knows everything. What I mean by that is, whenever you have a question or are curious about something, AI is a great tool to refer to without having to feel like you have to watch a 10 minute YouTube video or read through a dozen articles on Google. And in a weird but interesting way, I feel like I get to be a kid again, going back to the time where it was okay to be curious, it was okay to not know anything, and I can ask both practical and weird and random questions. So in conclusion, the best way to understand this is through an analogy, such as the development of the personal computer. When it first released in the late 70s and early 80s, there were so few use cases for the average person to go out and immediately purchase a computer. However, a lot of businesses that adopted computers early on benefited tremendously as they moved from pen and paper to digital ways of calculating, storing, and transmitting data. But as the decades passed, the personal computer exploded with the availability of the internet, games, and other applications. AI today, while it'll help people like you and me with simplifying some tasks, helping us save some time, and answer some burning questions quickly, AI will truly benefit the businesses and the next generation that put in the time and energy to adopt AI well. And ultimately, I think it comes down to having that childlike mentality of being curious in whatever place you find yourself in today. Thanks for watching, and if you have some thoughts yourself or use cases of AI, I would love to see them in the comments below. If you enjoyed this, hit that thumbs up and subscribe if you loved it. See you guys in the next one.